Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and in this tutorial we're going to go over the techniques I use to create this little island you can see here. So we're going to use the landscape generator and the ocean modifier and a few particle systems uh, and then the compositor. So all that being said, let's go and jump in there and get started on this guy. So we're going to start with the default scene and I'm going to go ahead and delete the cube and we're going to go to the user preferences menu and we're going to enable the ANT landscape generator right there. So go ahead and check that box there. We're going to close that out now. And now we're going to shift A. And you can see that it now puts the landscape there under your mesh settings. So we're going to put that in there. And you'll have some options over here to edit your landscape. I want to make it quite a bit bigger and change some of the, you know, the size and, and shape of it. So right now it's the default is set to 2.0 it's two blender units by two blender units but i'd kind of like it to fill this whole ground plane up here so let's let's see how many we got one two three four five six seven eight by eight so that'd make it 16 so let's make it 16 there we go and now we'll come down here to these settings down here the height offset plateau and sea level i'm going to make the sea level a little bit lower because i'd like to go just a little bit below the scene floor which is the green line which is automatically set in in the default scene. So let's go down just a little bit just to get right below it maybe point uh, an even point negative point one probably will work. Okay now the plateau settings are basically the 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 peak of your or basically the tallest your 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 mountains can go before they start flattening out like a plateau or mesa or something like that. I don't really want a, a plateau or a mesa on this island, so I'm going to go ahead and set that to a high number so I can go up pretty much as high as I need to right here under height. Just change that. Let's make that an even five. And now there's way too many little craggy peaks in here, so I'm going to come up here and change the noise size to a little bit bigger, or quite a bit bigger actually. Let's make that, let's make that an even five also. Okay, so now that's looking pretty decent for a, for an island, but there's a few settings I'd like to change still yet. First of all, I'd like the, the beach to be a little more gradual rather than starting at the water and boom, immediately going up to the mountains. I'd like to see some more flat beach. So let's scroll down all the way down here. And there's a few different fall off types we can do. Type one is as you can see it right here. It's got a nice, a, a simple fade out to the edge. Excuse me, but if we go to type 2, it makes it a lot better as far as like an island goes with the long beach. So we'll go with part with type 2. There's a few others in here, Y and X, which is essentially if you're going to make a mountain range or something like that and you don't need to center it around the middle, you know, you can just do it like that and then put it in the background of your scene or whatever you want to do with it. So we're going to go with type 2. Okay, now, um, as we see in the reference, let me pull that back up there. Um, I've got a couple of different, well, a, a smaller hill area right here, and then a, a, a here, a, a mountain here, and a mountain here. So uh, let's edit this so we have something a little more similar, instead of just kind of a, you know, a valley there with one little one one mountain there. Let's uh, let's see what options we have. Let's we'll scroll over here, and under the random seed, we can just click through there, and and it'll give us a few different choices. So let's just click through here and see what we got. I kind of like that one, but I'd like to see more than one high peak there. So let's just keep going. That one almost could work. I might go with that one. So that was number 12. Let's just keep going. 15 looked okay. You know what? I think I'm going to go with this one. I think I'm going to go with 15. Um, yeah. And let's set the noise size a little bit smaller so it gets a little bit craggier there we go that'll work okay now the dimension here it gives us it kind of smooths out our fractal noise area to, to give the the mountains a little bit less cragginess as I call it uh, one other thing we can change right here the subdivisions right now is 64 if we make that a little higher I'm gonna set it to 96 we can see a little bit more detail there in our our little you know, hills and valleys and things like that. So uh, let's round these numbers off. I'm going to set the noise size. Since it's 
point, 3.84, I'm going to go ahead and make it an even 4, just so it's easier to remember. Dimensions, 1.25. Um, Locunarity, I'm not sure. Gap between frequencies. Well, that's kind of cool. You can play with that. You can do all kinds of things with this landscape generator here. So let's come back to maybe about... Let's use that one. 2.22. Okay, and everything else I think is fine. I would like to see that beach be a little bit a little bit longer. So let me see if I can't play with some of these other settings here. Yeah, if we choose the offset, we can kind of lower the overall mountain down a little bit. Maybe just a little bit at a time. There we go. I think that'll work. And also, uh, all the all the settings for the landscape I think are are good as far as the control panel over here. Now, be aware if you're messing with this, and you come in here and you want to go into edit mode and kind of just push and pull stuff around, which I'm about to do here in a second. Once you do that, you no longer have your controls over here. So get everything you want, every get it get it set the way you want over here with your controls before you mess with it because once you start messing with it you don't have these controls anymore so if I for example if I go in here and hit tab into edit mode and then tab back out oop, you know all those controls are gone so get everything situated the way you want before you start editing it in edit mode so um, let's go to our top view and the camera is going to be more towards the front so let's just move that over here and then the light we're going to turn that into a sunlight, actually. So let's we'll grab that and come over to our lamp settings and turn it to a sun. And I'd like the light to be coming more from this angle rather than that angle. So let's just rotate that around about like so. And while we're in there, let's go ahead and turn on the sky. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. However, I would like to rotate my island around to where there's more beach in the front facing the camera than around the other side. So let's go to uh, top view tab into edit mode and rotate it 180 degrees on the z-axis there we go tab out and now we have the the beaches there in front so if we look through our camera uh, we're zoomed in quite a bit too far so let's change our camera settings just a little bit I'm gonna put the th 3d cursor right there shift a and add an empty and I'm gonna grab the camera shift select that new empty control T and there's a few different ob uh, uh, selections we can do here. Damped, track to constraint, which I'm going to use. Um, it will enables you to, it points the camera at the constraint, but then you still can rotate the camera around however you need to, as well as far as along that axis goes. This controls that, those, this controls the X and Y axis of rotation, essentially, and then you can still control the Z. So, uh, if you just use the like if we did that again, control T. If you just use the track to constrain, it would still control the X and Y axis, but you wouldn't be able to rotate the camera itself like so. So anyways, let's look through the camera and kind of just zoom out. The way you do that is it, when you're looking through the camera, you just hit G and then use your middle mouse button and then just move your mouse up and down and you can zoom out like so. Then we'll just move it around until it's about like so and kind of rotate it just a little bit. Okay, uh, let's uh, change the um, the uh, focal length of the camera when we're looking out at an island or something like that. We're probably going to use a bit of a zoom lens, so let's set the focal length a little bit higher. Let's make it an even 50, then we'll zoom out a little further. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we're going to go to this island folder I made before. And we're going to call this island. This is probably going to be a multi-part series. I'm not sure how many parts it will be. Probably at least two. So I'm going to go ahead and call this island part one. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now if we just want to do a test render just to kind of see what it's looking like. There we go. Not looking too shabby. Um, once we get the everything else layered on here, it's going to start looking a lot better. So one thing I want to do before we go any further with the island is go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier on there just to get it a little smoother. And it renders. I go ahead and set the render to one subdivision as well. Uh, we won't get that cragginess right there, so we render that out. You can see it's smoothed out now. Okay. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and set the texture for the for the island, and I'm going to use that. Go ahead and save. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the texture compositor because what I want to do is kind of give this a a layered texture. I want to have the sand around the bottom there on the water line fading into a bit of a dirt mud area right in here and then as we get to the top of the peaks of the mountains I want it to be more of a stony rock face type of thing so the way we can do that is using the texture compositor so let's jump in here go ahead and give it a material we'll call this terrain and we'll go to our texture settings now is that a new one and since it's sand and we're going to be zoomed out pretty far we can just use a standard a solid color you know if we're going to be close up we'd probably want to use the uh, cloudiness and you know give it a couple of different shades like just kind of a dark tan or brown and then a light tan about like so and then set the cloud size to be a lot smaller so like so then maybe brighten that up just a little bit So you could do like that and get that type of sand, but since we're going to be so far out, we won't really be able to see the individual sand particles like this. So I'm just going to give it a solid, a solid color, and I'm going to do that by changing the type of texture here to a blend, and then just go ahead and delete this, this color right here, and we'll have this color as a solid color. Make that a little bit more gray. Okay. So let's turn on the both uh, preview there so we can see the material and the or te the texture and the material applied to a sphere. And as we can see, it's way too shiny. So let's go to our material settings here. Set the intensity way down. Let's make it 0.15 and then the hardness to 15. And actually make this intensity 0 0.05. That'll be a little bit more dirt-like because dirt's really not shiny unless it's wet and you know it's not going to be wet all the way up the island. So anyways, <clears throat> back to our texture settings. Let's go ahead and name that one Sand. And go ahead and save. And let's go ahead and create a second one now. And we'll go ahead and name this one Dirt. There we go. And this one I'm going to leave on clouds. So we'll just go ahead and turn on the color ramp there. Set the alpha of this black all the way up to 1. And make this kind of just a dark brownish tone. Like so. And then we'll grab the white side and make that a little bit lighter brown tone. So there we go. Okay, go ahead and say I like to save as often as I can because sometimes Blender will crash on you for no apparent reason as we all know. But anyways, let's go ahead and add a third texture here and this was going to be rocky. And we'll use the clouds again except this time I'm going to use a different type of cloud. I'm going to come down here to the basis and instead of Blender Original I'm going to go to Voronoi F2-F1. It gives us a nice craggy now you could go up to the Voronoi Crackle, but for in my opinion that's more for like a you know a dry desert floor that's not seen any you know water for years or something like that, so it's all cracked. But uh, I'm not going to go with that one. I'm going to do the F2 F1. So there we go. And let's go ahead and turn the color ramp on for that. Set this alpha all the way up to one. And I would like the rocks to be black and white, but not quite as black and white as this. I want to make it more grayish tones. So let's bring that black up a little bit. Make it a little brighter. And let's make the white a little darker. So soft gray. So there we go. And then let's come down here to the clouds. And I'm going to leave the size as is for now, but I'm going to increase the depth. Let's make that about six. So that'll work. Okay. So now, go ahead and save. We've got our three, uh, our three textures here that we want to mix together. So let's go ahead and turn those off because we're not actually going to use those on the model itself. We're going to mix them together and then use that on the model. Before I go any further, I want to go ahead and unwrap the UV coordinates of this island. So let's go to our top view. And let's split the window up there and come over here to the UV image editor. And let's go ahead and X that out. Okay, so now, top view. If I tab into edit mode, everything's already selected. If I hit U and I go unwrap, it's going to take a little while because there's quite a few vertices in there. And 
for some reason it, it, it takes a little while. So the quickest, easiest way is just to go down here to project from view bounds. And what it's going to do is essentially take a snapshot of our top view of the island here, and it's going to kind of just flatten it out as a, as a UV map. And since we're using from bounds, it's going to put it all the way to the edge of the image boundaries there. So we'll go U, project from view, bounds. And there we go. So let's tab back out. And that's all we need to do for now as far as that goes. Go, go, go ahead and control S, save. And now we'll start working on this, uh, on this composited texture. So let's make a fourth texture here and call this one mixture. And we'll come over here, go to our node editor. And with that texture selected, let's make this window a little bit bigger. We're going to come over here and turn on the texture nodes there. And then scroll over here and go to use nodes. Now, go ahead and save this. One issue I've ran into, hopefully it won't do it this time, but one issue I've ran into is for some reason, if you delete the checkerboard here, or if you mess with it at all, sometimes it makes Blender crash. So cross your fingers, I'm gonna delete that now, and Blender crash, so we'll be right back. I'll, I'll, let me pause the recorder, I'll open it back up and we'll, we'll do a uh, kind of a, uh, a workaround for that, so be right back. Okay, here we are. So instead of deleting it and crashing Blender, let's just move it over here and hold down control and just just move it out of the way. So if we delete it, it'll crash, so we'll just move it out of the way. So anyways, now we're gonna add some inputs. Texture, just drag that up, and I'm gonna Shift D, duplicate that, and we're just gonna mix the first two for now so I can show you uh, what I'm talking about here. And now we're gonna add another texture to mix them together, and it's gonna be a blend. So let's move that up there. And set this color one to color one, second color to color two, and then connect them all the way to the final output. Now you're just seeing black right now because we haven't specified which colors we want to blend together. So let's just click in here and we're gonna say sand. And then we'll click down here and say dirt. So now we're mixing the sand and the dirt. And you can see it's mixing quite nicely. So now we want to mix, since this is a, a, gonna be basically the sand mixing into the dirt and then the dirt mixing into the rocks we need to kind of do the same thing except you know switch the switch the textures here so I'm gonna select these three guys shift D duplicate those down here okay and then I'm gonna change this one to dirt and this one to rocky and then if we connect this one to the color you can see it's the dirt to the rock now what we need to do is add another blend, Shift D, to merge, to blend these two blends together, if that makes sense. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now you can kind of see the sand mixing into the dirt, mixing into the rock. However, we're not seeing a lot of that dirt, and I'd like to see more of the dirt. So let's do this. Go ahead and control S. Uh, what I want to do is essentially make each one of these a little narrower, kind of about half the size, and then kind of just bump it up, move this one over to the left, half size, move to the left, this one half size, move to the right, and then they'll line up a little bit better on here. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna add distort, and we'll do scale first, just drag this up here, and you click on the scale there, you get some little options, it's going on the X, Y, Z axis. So let's just do 0.5, actually, when you're scaling textures, it's, it kind of works the opposite than you would think. Instead of 0.5 being half, it's going to be 2. So it maps it on there twice, basically. And so that makes it half the size. Okay, so now we got it half the size we want. We're going to add another one, another distort, and this one's going to be translate. Translate is a fancy word for move. So we're going to move it, we're going to offset it to the left on the x-axis not not too much actually it moves really fast so if we just scroll in here so we can see the numbers a little bit better just click on the arrows we can kinda of just move it 0.5 there we go okay so we got that set up and you can see it already starting to take effect over here let's copy these two distorts here shift D duplicate those down and put them in line with the second blend that we're working on 
and the scale's all set. We don't need to mess with that. But the offset needs to be the opposite now. Since we want 0.5, we need to go negative 0.5 to take it the opposite way. So now you can see we have a nice sand to dirt to rock. And that's what I want. Okay. So let's we're pretty well done with that texture. So let's come over here and get it set up on here. Now if we render right now, it's going to render this this uh, checker pattern. And the reason that is is because on the output we need to change that to default. So there we go. Now if we render, you can see that it's mapping that on there just like we want. Well, not just like we want, but it is mapping it on there. We got the sand, dirt, and rock, but I want to flip it around to where the sand, you know it's going vertical instead of horizontal. Now we can do that over here if I change this to that and change these to that, these to that. But I haven't been able to get results that are, you know, that that re repeat. I can't duplicate the process, but it looks like it's working now. However, it's if we grab our camera and kind of do it up like this, you can see a little bit better. It's doing basically the same thing. It's it, instead of before where it was going horizontally, now it's going essentially vertically. But that's no big deal. What we can do to fix that, and not necessarily fix it, but uh, get it to map the way we want, is change the projection from or change the coordinates from generated to global and now they should start you know from the bottom of the scene of the global scene to the essentially ground to the sky is how it's going to work so now if we render out it's going to do it properly okay so that's working well no essentially <laughs> it's not again uh it looked like it was at first but uh we need to change some more settings what we want to do to to kind of flip this around tell blender be like no we need to flip this the other way. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, sorry, I had to pause real quick. Went to a bit of a coughing spell, so I'm all better now. Okay, so anyways, to get this to map vertically rather than, you know, long ways on the z-axis, as it were, we need to flip a couple of these mapping coordinates. So let's flip the x to z, and then we'll come over to the z and flip that to x. So now we'll, if we render... Uh, looks like it's doing the same thing. So, um, tell you what, let's come back over here and set those both back to horizontal like we did when I was starting off. And, okay, looks, <laughs> like I said, it, that, that didn't, I couldn't get that to work properly. So, if we set that back to the original, it looks like it's going to be rendering properly according to the preview over here. So, let's go ahead and render that and see what it looks like. Okay, that looks looks like it's doing properly now. However, uh, we need to offset it because we can't see any of the beach at all and the rocks are covering way too much. So, we'll do the offset here. Since we flipped these coordinates, we need to go negative on the x-axis here and it's going to bring it up some. So let's keep going with that. About point, negative point 0.7. Let's do a render there see what that looks like. Okay, that's getting better. I would like to see the a little bit more brown, so let's increase the scale uh, of the x-axis as well. Let's make that 0.5, and then maybe offset it a little bit more. So we're going to offset negative 1 on the x, and then size 0.5 on the x. Go ahead and save this. F12. And that should be about, yeah, that's about what I'm wanting. Okay, now, you know, I'm not going to go with a, a grass texture or anything, but if you wanted to, you could go ahead and throw, you know, a grass texture in here into your your uh, your blending area and get and maybe instead of the dirt, you could throw in some grass. And, it, you know, from a distance, you can't tell that it's a texture map. So anyways, we're just going to go with the dirt right now, right now and uh, we'll add some trees and whatnot on there, as you could see in the preview. We'll try to get as close to this as we can. Okay, so that being said, 
we need to make our rocks look a little less like they were stacked on there. They need to be part of the mountain. So let's go to our rocks here and we'll set the size to be quite a bit bigger. Maybe an even 1.0. There we go. And the depth, why not? Let's increase that to 10. And then, let's go ahead and save. We'll come back down to our mixture. And I want the rocks to be a little skinnier. So if you can see in our, in here, we have some skinny, craggy rocks there. So let's work on getting that. And the way we do that is essentially repeat the, the pattern uh, so it's so that it's squished together more. <clears throat> and the way we do that, since we flipped our X and Ys, uh, since we edited the X and it made it vertically different, we're going to edit the Z now to make it uh, horizontally different. So uh, since we want to increase it, we're going to increase the Z index right here. So let's put that to, let's make it 2.5 and see what that's going to look like. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and do a render. And yeah, that's starting to look pretty pretty decent. I like it. I like it. Um, okay, so we'll, we're going to call that good to go on our on our texture settings here. However, what I would like to have the texture do in as addition to being the colors is I would like it to be a bump map as well. But since it's using the the compositor, for some reason, I'm sure there's a good reason behind it. it, it doesn't want to work as a normal map at the same time. So if I go ahead and select that, you can see that it doesn't really change much. It kind of affects, looks like the emission for some reason, but uh, it's not actually giving it a bump. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And what I want to do now is take this texture that we've created in the compositor and bake it to a JPEG image that we can map on there and then use that for the normals as well. So let's go and escape out of there and come over to this window and bring that back to the UV image editor and go and save. And we'll tab into edit mode so we can get all our vertices selected and add a new image. And let's make it 2048 by 2048. And we'll say OK. And it creates a new image. And we'll tab out. And now if we go to our render settings, scroll all the way down to bake and set the bake mode to textures and make sure that's selected. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit bake and it's going to take that composited texture and bake it down to this image right here. It's going to mix them all together as they are mapped onto the island as you see them in the render and it's going to make a texture map out of that. So. It's baking it now. It's going to take a couple seconds there, so I'm going to go ahead and pause recording. Oh no, did it crash on me? No, okay, just kind of glitched. Okay, so it's baking that. I'll go ahead and pause recording so you don't have to sit here and watch it, and we'll be right back after that's done. So be right back. Okay, so that's done baking that out. Let's go ahead and save it. Save as image. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new directory here in my island folder. I'm going to call this textures. And we'll just go in there and name this Island Terrain Texture Map. You can name it whatever you like, but I like to name it kind of a descriptive name. So Island Terrain Texture Map. And usually I save things as PNGs, but those tend to get a little file size heavy. So let's make it a JPEG and then set the quality all the way to 100%. And we'll go ahead and save. Okay, so now we come back over here in our material settings. Make sure you got the terrain there selected and go to our textures and let's go ahead and turn off the mixture now and we'll create a fifth section a fifth texture there and let's call this one well I guess terrain texture map there we go and set it to be a an image or a movie and since we have it loaded over here already we can just hit the little thumbnail there and it's going to be untitled and let's go ahead and give it a title terrain texture map and should be good to go. Make the mapping UV. And then we'll go ahead and give it the normal geometry as well. Let's set that to 1.5 just so it's a little, a little deeper. So now if we save, render, 
we'll see that nice jaggedy bump map on there as well. So that's looking that's looking pretty decent. I like that. Okay. So let's escape out and let's start working on a little bit more of the environment around the island, i.e. the ocean. So we're going to shift A and add a plane and that added that right there. I'm going to go to my front view and let's drag that way down go to wireframe view so we can see it a little easier. Let's drag that way down to just above the bottom of the island. About right there. And now we're going to go to the modifiers. Actually, before I do that, uh, I want to go ahead and let me tab in there. Oops. Grab that. Tab. I hit T for some reason. Okay. Uh, UV coordinates unwrap. Okay. So we'll, we'll need that here in a minute. So we'll use that like I said, here in a minute. Anyways, okay. So we're going to add an ocean modifier. And the default settings for the ocean for this size, uh, they're a little too big. So we're going to edit this. Let's make the spatial size 750. Or not 750, but 75. And the resolution, let's bump that up to 15. And choppiness, make that about 1.5. And the scale, that's where we need to change. So since we're... Since our island is in the middle of the ocean that we don't want the waves kind of coming up because you know the higher the scale the higher the bigger the waves so we don't want to mess with that let's make the waves about 0.25 and let's set our camera back down to where it's a nice view of the island make the window bigger here and about like so and since we're in 3D, we can kind of cheat with with uh, with things. We don't need a lot of water behind the camera because we're not going to see it. So we can move the the water, the ocean plane there, a little further back, so we can get more in the horizon area there. So now, if we save this, if we render now, it wouldn't look that good because you know it's just a white. We don't have a texture map set onto our ocean yet. So let's work on that. Uh, go to our materials and create a new one and let's just call this one ocean okay and specular level I'm gonna change the the type here to ward ISO um, a lot of people have asked me if I if I use that one because it's my last because ward is my last name it's like eh, might have been what caught my attention about it but anyways uh, it's easier to give a nice shiny specular sheen to things with that you can set the intensity as high as you want and then the slope makes it you know the smaller the slope the smaller the reflection which means it's a little bit wetter looking so let's set the slope to 0 0.02 and the intensity to 0.75 there we go and let's go ahead and collapse these guys here and collapse that one we want to turn on mirror so check the checkbox beside mirror and under reflectivity let's make it 0.15 and now we can oops now we can collapse that. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's come over here to our texture settings now. And let's create a new one. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to create a blend, kind of like we did on the sand texture. It's just going to be a solid single color. So let's delete that color there. Just make it... When you, when you look at a, a deep blue sea, most of the blue that you're seeing is not the actual water. It's reflecting the sky. So the water itself is going to be more of a, a dark bluish gray. So about about like so. Okay. So that's going to be the color of our water. We'll just call this one ocean color. Color. There we go. And let's create a second texture here. And this one's going to be uh, a sub... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A... Uh, what's the word? Come on, brain. <laughs> a supplement. There we go. Uh, a supplemental wave bump map. Because right now, if we rendered, we got waves from the actual ocean modifier, but uh, they're a little bit bigger than we'd like, especially for the scale. So I'm going to add this extra one in there to, to help out with that. So we'll go ahead and check on color ramp. And why not go ahead and make that black alpha all the way up to 1.0. And we're going to change it to hard. And now let's go to both preview. And come down here and turn off color, but turn on normal. Now the way the normal map works is it takes everything that's white and raises it up and everything that's black and 
puts it down. So right here, as you can see, if we could zoom in on that, uh, we could see a little bit better, but everything that's white is going to be bumped up and everything that's black is going to be bumped down. Now, this would work on like a ground plane because, you know, it's kind of rounded off. But as far as water goes, most, most of the time, the waves are going to be sharper than the, the non-wave area, the, the tops of the waves. So let's, in, in this picture here, the, the black lines are going to be smaller than the white ones. So let's make the, the normals set to a negative number right there. So it'll look a little bit better in the waves. Okay. Now, uh, to give a better sense of scale, let's uh, set the size of our waves quite a bit smaller. Let's make that, let's see what point 0.1 looks like. And we'll go ahead and save this. And should be good to go. Let's go ahead and save again and hit it, do a test render. Let's see what these waves and everything are going to look like. Okay, not too bad. Um, probably want to set the mapping to be UV. So let's go ahead and do that under mapping. Let's set that to UV so it's flattened out on there. And let's try it. Go ahead and save. I like to save as often as I can. <laughs> Don't know how many times I've lost scenes due to a crash or something or failure to save. Okay, so the water looks a little bit better, but it's way too big now. So let's grab the clouds again and make them a lot smaller. So let's try 0 0.01 and see what that looks like. Go ahead and save. A lot of trial and error when it comes to this type of thing. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. I like those waves a lot better. Okay, so our ocean looks pretty good. Our island's looking okay. Uh, once we get the trees and everything on there, it's going to look a lot better. So, one more thing I want to do with the ocean before we call it a day on this part one is I want to put, you know, it's, it's fading into the island, so I'd like to give it, instead of just being stark stuck in there, I'd like to give it a little bit of gradation there. So let's escape out, and I want to give the ocean here a texture map, but the, the size right here is, is simply based on that, on, that, uh, on that modifier, so if we turn that modifier off, the size is actually really small. So in order to get a good idea of where to paint a texture map, I'm going to create another plane. And we're going to scale that up to where it's roughly the same size as our ocean. About like so. And then we'll come to our front view and just merge it or flatten it down. Bring it down to where it's about the same place as the ocean. Let's grab the ocean and let's go ahead and turn that off for now. Or just turn it off in the visibility. Okay, so now, uh, tab into edit mode of this new plane, U, unwrap, and it has, it's going to have the same, exact same texture coordinates as our ocean. Now, the ocean modifier will increase that uh, UV coordinates to be the same size as the ocean. So anything we do on this and copy it over to the ocean, even though the ocean is actually just that small little plane, the modifier will increase the the image map to be the right size. So, uh, with this placeholder image, we're going to, let's tab into edit mode so we get the UVs and come over here and we're gonna X that out because that's the islands texture map. We don't wanna mess with that. We're gonna create a new one and let's, yeah, we'll go ahead and make this one 2048. I was gonna leave it 1024, but the bigger the better because you get more detail. And let's, instead of black, let's make it that grayish blue tone. About like so, and we'll say okay. Okay, so tab back out, and now let's go to texture paint. Now, one thing I wanna do before, actually, I'll, I'll save that for last. Uh, I'll let you, I'll, I was gonna, before we get done with this, what I wanna do is make, kind of the illusion that uh, the the water's getting shallow, more shallow as it comes up to the island. So I'd get a soft bluish tone, a lighter blue. So we'd do it like that and you can see it kind of makes it look like the water's getting you know more transparent the closer it gets to the shoreline. So I'm gonna undo that. I'll do that last. What I want to do first is make some breakers, some little waves splashing there around the around the the border of the island. 
So let's make our radius of our brush really small. Like so, maybe a little bit smaller. Let's make it, let's set it to three. And then the strength way down. And let's make it a little bit more blue. I don't want it to be solid white. That'd be just a little bit too, too stark. So, okay. Now let's just go in here. Maybe a little bit more strength. There we go. Let's just go in here and just start painting in some little breakers, some waves coming in, splashing on the shore. Oops. Come right here. Now, if your camera is only going to be on one side, you, you really don't need to go all the way around the island. Because, uh, like I said, with the with the ocean, we can we can kind of cheat things we're not going to see. We don't really need to give a lot of attention to. If you're going to animate the scene where you're going around the island then you probably do want to do as much as you can, but but if you're just going to do the one steady shot, then you don't really need to do all that extra work. Okay, so we'll get that a little bit more. Okay, so I think that'll that'll be pretty good for now. Okay, now I don't want to render those harsh lines because, well, uh, it doesn't really look that that good because we just drew it on there. So let's soften it down and make it a little bit more uh, more natural looking. So let's go to our brush settings here and use the soften tool. Let's make the radius quite a bit bigger and set the strength. Eh, point two is probably good. So we'll just kind of gently brush over this. And it's going to kind of blur those down to where they're not quite as obviously painted on with a computer mouse. If you have a tablet, you know, you can go crazy with it. Probably get some good good results there, but I'm just using a mouse. Okay. So there we go. Now, like I said before, let's uh, give the illusion that the water around the, uh, 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 the island is getting more shallow the closer you get. So let's get a nice aquamarine tone and set the radius really big and the strength, let's make that really small, 0.1 probably. So let's make it really big, let's make it one, let's make it 180. So let's start clicking in here and maybe the strength is too low. Not really seeing any different, oh we're still on soften, there we go, we need to go back to either brush or text draw, either one. So text draw, there we go, okay, there we go. And I like a little more a little darker, not quite as bright white. Maybe a little more green. Okay, so I think that'll work. And maybe you know what we can do? Maybe even still, it's bright. Maybe start making it a little more yellowish tone, closer to the beach, so it looks even, even thinner. Like it's, the sand is starting to show through. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this image. And we'll call this one Ocean. Oops, hit the caps lock on accident. Ocean with uh, Shore. And then Texture Map. I like to specify all texture maps as texture maps in the title. Uh, that's just my preference. Again, let's go to JPEG instead of PNG. Increase the quality all the way up to 100. And let's go ahead and save as. Okay, now we'll come back into object mode. And we don't really need this placeholder anymore. We could delete it, but I'm just going to go ahead and move it to its own layer over here. And then let's click in here and find that ocean. There we are. Go ahead and turn that back on. And just to make sure we get things lined up the way we need to, uh, let's turn on, if we turned on texture settings here, we wouldn't see it on the ocean. Actually, we need to go ahead and make that part of the ocean texture, I guess. So let's go back to the ocean color that we made earlier. Instead of blend, let's go ahead and make that an image or movie. Go and turn off the color ramp. And under image, hit the little thumbnail, and we'll say untitled again. We need to name this ocean uh, with shore texture map. There we go. And make the mapping set to UV. Okay. So now even though that texture map is now applied to our ocean, 
we can't see it. And that's just because we're in object mode of our default shading. Okay, sorry, I had to pause yet again. Another another coughing spell. Okay, but anyways, the way we can see this texture map on here is if we turn on, if you hit in to bring up our properties and go to display, we can go to GLSL and we can see where that's located. And it looks like it's uh, kind of the opposite of where we want it. It's mapped this way instead of this way, if that makes sense. So the easiest way I found, we could attempt to go in and, and rotate it around in the UV coordinates or even rotate it around over here. But let's set that to ocean. There we go. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't really change anything. So the only easiest way that I found is just to physically rotate the ocean 180 degrees and it matches right up with it. So there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And one thing I want to do before I render again is since this is set to the color, I'd also like to set it to the normal. So those white caps will kind of raise up out of the water and it'll, the water will kind of attach to the island a little bit better. So let's go ahead and save that and go ahead and render this guy out. Make the window a little bit bigger so you can see the whole deal. And there we go. See that nice gradation of color there helps helps the island blend in with the ocean a little bit better. So. Okay, so that's going to be all for part one. Uh, 47 minutes coming on. So in part two, we'll get into uh, getting some texture maps for our trees. We're going to use uh, transparent PNGs and use the particle system to scatter them around the island. We'll go ahead and create some rocks, uh, actual physical rocks, or not, you know, 3D physical rocks, and uh, scatter those across the island as well. So, uh, like I said, this is going to be all for part one. So, uh, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you in part two.